Hi folks, this is Bob Sunday from Tao Stove. I'm going to just a small subject to talk about today because as we go along, one of the big points counters of alcohol stoves that everybody kind of bases things on is how long it takes to boil a couple cups of water. Um, how, you know, whether a stove will actually reach a temperature that will boil water. Um, there's a lot of folks out there that say, you know, you don't need the water boiled. Great. We all cook different ways. You know, if you need 185 degree water to make what you want and it says it should be 212, but it works for you, then, hey, that's what you do. Um, I just want to bring up the subject of altitude. Altitude has a lot to do with the times it takes to boil those two cups of water. Um, when you're up at, in Taos here, we're at 7,000 feet above sea level. When I boil water on the stoves, my water comes to a rolling boil at 192 degrees. It doesn't come to boil between 192, excuse me, and 193. Uh, and you can look up these numbers per altitude on, on the computer. There's tons of places where they, they'll give you that info. Basically up here is about 192, 193 degrees. Boiling water. When you're down at the beach and you're at zero, it's 212. That's when your water's going to boil. So when I give you the times on these stoves, just remember, if you're down at sea level, hey, it may take another minute. It may take another two minutes to uh, to get that water to 212. Um, it's just uh, you got to deal with it where you are. Um Altitude makes a lot of differences. Um, matter of fact, take it from me, uh, learned this 10 years ago or more, about 11 years ago, is that if you grew up your whole life at 600 feet, which, which I pretty much did, I was born in the Midwest and lived in the South for most of my life, you know, 800 foot elevation. Um, I came out here the first time to visit at 7,000 feet and uh, wondered why I was like floating around all the time. Well, there's no air compared to 800 uh, feet above sea level. Um, great story is when uh, some fellow that we were staying with suggested that we go to some hot springs down on the Rio Grande uh, River that uh, you had to walk down to the springs and uh, just happened to be the spring that they used in the movie Easy Rider where Dennis and everybody and, and Fonda and uh, I can't even remember, Jack Nicholson were all sitting around at night in the in at the hot springs. Well, that was the hot springs we went to visit. And it was downhill, 650 feet. Um, on the average from the rim, it's about 650 feet to the to the river. Uh, we went bouncing down the trail just like bunnies, man. Got swimsuits, towels. It was like the week before Thanksgiving, heading for the hot springs. Got down there. Everything's great. Hop in the water. Rio Grande's floating. You got a nice hot spring right beside the river. It's just beautiful. And I'm sitting there, and a couple ladies came down, uh, and we were sitting there in the hot springs, and they were just sitting up on the rocks, and they were smokers, and the only thing I've ever done good was give up smoking about 25 years ago. Um, they uh, they were just sitting there smoking, so they had a great conversation. Um, we got out of the hot springs, and we decided we'd start up, walk that 650 feet up back up to the car. Well, when I got to about 300 feet, I was leaning on rocks. I couldn't breathe. It was like, whoa. It was a major difference. This has got this is thin air. Then I hear the voices coming behind me. It's the two ladies who were down at the bottom, and I had left like 10 minutes before them. They were cruising up the trail, and they were still smoking cigarettes. But they had grown up up here. They had grown up it. So you really have to, to train yourself for the kind of places you're going to go to. You can acclimate, train, you know. I mean, training in a way is just going out and walking with your pack. You are in training. You know, it's no different than people that run marathons go out and run to train. Well, you know, work it out. If if you're going to just hop in, the, hop on the plane from Washington D.C., it's right at, at water level. Okay. 
And you're going to come out here and you're going to hop off the plane and you're going to take your pack and you're going to get yourself a vehicle and you're going to drive up here 7,000 feet to start with. I don't care if you're carrying an ultralight pack. You're, you, if you're carrying 20 pounds on your back, it's going to feel like you're carrying 100 pounds on your back after about a half hour on the trail. So really think about where you're going. Um, and really the elevation thing as far as these items go, it just has more to do with what they'll do at that elevation. Uh, there's none of these stoves that will not function even at the highest elevations at 14,000. Now, weather at 14,000 may be a, a, a factor to deal with. Um, you know, at middle of June, at uh, 14,000 feet in New Mexico, you could be sitting there making yourself a cup of coffee and the sun shining, and maybe 10 to 15 minutes later, you're standing in the middle of a slush storm. It's a thunderstorm with slushy ice coming down in June. And it's hyper, basically hyperthermia city. Uh, you just really have to be prepared, um, like anything. Uh, so just, just a little info about coming out here in the world of, of the higher mountains and, and camping. Um, again, I'll just make the point that your boil times will be different. So if you buy a stove and you take it home and you're in Washington, D.C., and I'm boiling water up here in six minutes to 192 degrees, as I said earlier, you may be sitting in Washington, D.C. with your stove burning on the table and you've got the same two cups of water I put in. You're boiling in the same pan that I'm using. But guess what? It may take another two minutes. You're trying to go to 212. Uh, it's just the numbers. There are things in your cooking at high altitude that you, you make little changes. And if you're using prepared foods, companies that know they're, especially in the baked goods, as we'll talk about baking because I do a lot of that, uh, you'll find that you have to change the recipes a little bit for the altitude. And they'll usually give you directions for that. And, uh, and you just make those changes and it's no different than being downtown. In Washington, sitting there cooking in your kitchen at, at five feet above sea level. Um, thanks a lot for listening, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again.